Hello and welcome to this video on Demand Driven Material Requirements Planning. In this video we will focus on the keywords and concepts of DDMRP, while showing system examples from SAP S4 HANA. Additional information and theoretical and practical examples on Demand Driven Material Requirements Planning, DDMRP for short, can be found at the Demand Driven Institute. We will start by examining the benefits of using Demand Driven MRP. First, you will stabilize production environment by avoiding the bull whip effect, avoid missing parts and incomplete orders. Second, you can compress lead times in production by using strategically placed and adaptive inventory buffers. Third, you will synchronize inventory with demand, avoid obsolete inventory while maintaining a high product availability for your customers. First, let us explain a few keywords to this subject. Average daily use, also known as ADU. This is an estimation of the daily usage of a part number. In our simple example, you see a consumption of 10 pieces over a period of five days, giving us an ADU of two. To see average daily use in the system, we can enter the manage buffer levels tile. All three materials subjected to demand driven MRP are shown, and one of the information sets is the average daily usage. We can see that this material calculates an ADU only on the past 10 days, that it doesn't consider the future. These values are possible to maintain, according to business requirements. As can be seen, there is also a possibility to look forward, and this is how a forecast can be used in demand-driven MRP. More on this later in the video. We can also see the consumption data from the period in question. A buffer is a strategic inventory buffer, which is sized relative to the ADU, monitored and dynamically adjusted, when there are changes to actual demand. We can see the buffer positions graphically, from the same view as we use to look at the ADU. We can also expand the product tree to see all levels. As we chose highlight buffered products, we can see that the products which have been strategically buffered are all highlighted in green. A decoupling point is an inventory position, where a buffer is placed. The decoupling also means that the MRP will use this point, as the starting point when making calculations. The criteria which is used to determine where a decoupling point should be located are ABC, which is the value of the material. XYZ, which is the volatility of the material. PQR, which is the frequency of usage in bill of materials for the material. EFG, which is the lead time of the material. This information can also be seen in our manage buffer tile. For our finished bike, we can see each of the values, including the underlying information of variability, lead time, value and bill of material usage. Each decoupling point is an inventory buffer, which only acts on qualified demand. It has four status levels. Green, yellow, red, and blue. The planning and execution are based on focused on maintaining the integrity of the decoupling points. Decoupled lead time is specific to DDMRP. It is constructed to absorb variability and compress lead times. This is done by calculating an intermediate lead time in the DDMRP setup, which is the DLT, or decoupled lead time. Traditional MRP calculation uses what is known as the cumulative lead time which is manufacturing lead time plus the longest procurement lead time. In our example we can see that if we put the buffer on the raw material, now having constant availability when we plan our semi-finished component, the decoupled lead time is 2 days, while the cumulative lead time is 16 days. This decoupling cut our lead time for our finished product by 14 days, because we have put a strategic buffer on the material with the longest lead time. This is a system example, where we can see our entire bill of material exploded, showing the different lead times. You can see the materials planned as strategic buffers, marked in red. You can also see the lead time and decoupled lead time, clearly stated, at each level of the bill of material. If we look at our finished good, as an example, we can see that its manufacturing lead time is 12 days. There are two semi-finished goods, which are part of the bomb. The first one we can see is buffered, therefore, its production lead time of 12 days will not be considered. Given the fact that there is a strategically placed buffer for this material, we can assume that the buffer will manage the shocks which may occur, and therefore always will be able to supply the components, to the production line of the finished product. The second one has a production lead time of 5 days. Therefore, when we calculated the decoupled lead time of the final product, we can see that it will be 17 days. 5 of the days, due to the second item not being a strategic buffer, and 12 days as the production lead time of the finished good. Qualified demand is important for DDMRP. It is all sales requirements which are due today or in the past. It also considers future order spikes, based on sales requirements. Forecasts are not considered qualified demand. We can look into the Replenishment Execution app. Here we will see the DDMRP planned materials, which require action. We will look into one of them, and we will see the stock overview. 
Here we will see that we have the end of decoupled lead time, as well as end of spike horizon. These are two time horizons which are specific for DDMRP. A decoupled explosion means the ability to stop an MRP explosion, at a decoupling point, or if you prefer a buffer position. The stopped explosion means that the planning to resupply the buffer position will restart only when there is an actual qualified demand. We stay inside the replenishment execution app, and here we choose a semi-finished material. When we go to the details, we will see that we are acting on an actual order, as in DDMRP we only work on qualified demand. In this case a reservation against a production order. DDMRP introduced a net flow concept to manage supply orders. The net flow equation is using the following information, available stock, add stock already ordered through supply channels, subtract qualified sales order demand, which equals the net flow position. Now we will examine the concept of DDMRP. DDMRP emphasizes visibility and variability reduction in the supply chain. Beside using concepts from Lean, Theory of Constraints and Six Sigma, it also comes with a set of innovations. We have gone through them in the keyword section. Decoupled lead time, which is essentially strategically placed buffers, allows planning and execution to be compressed, and it also provides shorter planning horizons and therefore lowers the variability in customer promises. This shorter, and more realistic timing protects the availability of the finished goods which is sold. The net flow equation uses only three elements. What is already available, what is on its way and what is truly required, that is, the qualified demand or sales requirements. This means that wrong forecasts will not impact neither the operational planning nor execution. The decoupled explosion is the ability to stop a multi-level bill of material explosion at a decoupling point. This means, that the decoupling point will react only to qualified demand, in the shape of production order. Hence, you will be able to act only on qualified demands also deep into the product structure. If we look at planning view, we will see that we have information on which materials to prioritize first. We also have the net flow position, and a button with which we can create the supply order, of the proposed quantity. The proposed quantity is usually the quantity required to reach top of green buffer position. Also, in the execution view, we see that the priority is set according to the on-hand buffer status. We see the relevant information of how much stock we have on hand, how much stock is already being procured, which is the open supply. We also have a button to expedite supply as required. How does MRP and DDMRP compare? On a high level, although there are different options, conventional MRP, on finished goods level, plan based on forecast. This is a major difference to DDMRP, which base its planning solely on what is known as qualified demand. Qualified demand, as we recall from the keywords section, means actual sales requirements. MRP uses the cumulative lead time for all levels of the bill of material. Depending on the number of levels of the bill of material, this will mean making calculations far into the future. With DDMRP, the lead time used is the decoupled lead time. This is a given, as the buffers will maintain their integrity against system shocks, and hence the need to look far into the future is less, than with a conventional MRP. The tightly coupled process of conventional MRP, is suggested by the fact that it runs all levels of a bomb with a cumulative lead time. This means that they are also planned together. For DDMRP, the demand signal doesn't go past the decoupling points, hence the buffers prevent the bull whip to amplify further down the supply chain. First, and most importantly, the methods are complementary, not exclusive. When you run DDMRP conventional MRP strategies are still valid. Demand-driven MRP is stronger, the worse the forecast accuracy is. A study online, and there are many to choose from, showed that if your forecast accuracy is at 80% or above, then conventional MRP provides a good result. The further the forecast accuracy declines, the more DDMRP will be able to improve the situation. Second variable is the lead time at the buffer position. The longer lead time, the better the saving from the lead time compression achieved through the decoupling points. Forecast accuracy is the first variable. The study proposed that if your forecast is at 80% or above, conventional MRP provides a good result. The further the forecast accuracy declines, the more DDMRP will be able to improve the situation. The functionality shown in this video, regarding demand-driven MRP, is available in S4 HANA, both cloud and on-premise versions. Let us complete the video, by repeating the benefits of using demand-driven MRP. First, you will stabilize production environment by avoiding the bull whip effect, avoid missing parts and incomplete orders. Second, you can compress lead times in production by using strategically placed and adaptive, inventory buffers. Third, you will synchronize inventory with demand, 
avoid obsolete inventory while maintaining a high product availability for your customers. The views, information or opinions expressed are solely those of the individuals involved and not those of the individual's employer or any other group or individual. Thanks a lot for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe. More videos like this coming shortly. See you then.